Hey, my name is Shirley and I am a rising second year medical school student. I do want to start off this video with a couple of quick disclaimers. The first one being that I do attend an MD slash allopathic medical school, meaning that although I was accepted to a couple of DO schools, I decided not to pursue that route. For those of you who have seen my AMCAS application video, the activities and the classes and my MCAT score will remain the same for this application. However, the sections for the GPA, the personal statement, as well as the letters of rec are a little bit different. So I'll be putting timestamps for those of you who want to skip to those sections specifically. And my second disclaimer is that I actually did not download a copy of the application when I did submit, so I don't have an actual PDF. However, I did log back into the ACOMA site and there was an option for me to restart the application and essentially select all the application data that I wanted to copy over to my new application. So I copied over everything. And once I got the confirmation that everything had been copied, I decided to start this video. So literally everything is the same, even the exact dates that I put in. So to start off, we have the personal information and obviously that'll be different for every individual. Moving on to the academic history. These are the universities that I attended. And then regarding my GPA, you can see here um, that it was not very good. And there was an upper trend though, so yay. <laughs> um, and there is a difference between how the ACOMAS calculates a GPA versus the MCAS because ACOMAS does not count math grades for their science GPA. So as you can see, my science GPA is about a 3.38 and it was definitely lower in my MCAS application. So that is one difference. And then if you want to see the actual classes that I inputted, you can look at my MCAS application. Uh, I don't want to input all my classes again. So that's not something I'll be doing for this video. For my MCAT, I took it in 2019 and got a 512. Moving on to the supporting information, the evaluations I got if I remember correctly, I got one from my OCHEM professor as well as my GenCHEM professor, both of which were from community college. I also got an evaluation from a DO that I shadowed as well as an MD that I worked for. I do want to advise those of you who are currently applying to be careful in terms of reading what is required for the letters of rec. For example, here I have pasted a screenshot of a, an email I sent to a DO school that I applied to that required two letters of rec, one of which was from a DO that I had to have shadowed 20 plus hours in a primary care setting. So I emailed them because I had not shadowed a DO in a primary care setting and had only done so in a cardiology setting. So just make sure that the evaluations you're getting meet the requirements of the school. Moving on to experiences, I'll be going over each of these really quickly because you can just pause and read the descriptions yourself. But I shadowed a DO. I shadowed an NP, I shadowed an MD, I worked as a back office medical assistant in a cardiology clinic, I shadowed a PA. There is no restriction so far as I'm aware in regards to the number of activities you can put down. So essentially I put down everything that I did, I shadowed all of these professions because when I was in college I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to pursue so I really wanted to get a look at different careers and see what would fit best for me. I was a conversation leader so I essentially helped students that were learning English and help lead a conversation so that they could have different topics to talk about. I was a photographer for a newspaper at my school. I was a writing tutor and helped uh, students with their college essays. I was an English and action tutor, so kind of similar to the conversation leader, but essentially helping students improve their English skills. I was a home health caretaker, so I helped someone who is affected with quadriplegia get ready for bed as well sometimes get ready for the morning. I was a fundraising chair for an organization in my school called Triton Dance Marathon. Dance Marathon is a nationwide organization, so if that's something you're interested in joining, I will leave a link down below, and that's certainly something you can look into. I was a camp counselor for Muscular Dystrophy Association, which was an awesome experience, and I highly recommend it to everyone that is eligible. I was an orientation leader for my college, so I helped students get acquainted to the campus. I was a research assistant for a short period of time for some EEG studies. I was a Red Cross volunteer, I helped with some blood drives and paperwork and things like that. I was a board member for a pre-health honor society at my school in which I served as a BLS slash CPR instructor. I was also a lab assistant 
so I did get a publication out of that and I put that in my achievement section of the ACOMAS application and I also volunteered in the physical therapy apartment at one of the local hospitals and lastly I did lead some workshops through uh, Circle K which is the college version of Key Club all right, so moving back to this morning information, now I'm going to talk about my personal statement. So I did write a different personal statement, not super, super different, but a little different from my AMCAS application. And the reason I did this is because from having interacted with various DO physicians, as well as looking into the mission statements for DO schools, and essentially looking into what the DO application wanted, I felt that there was a greater emphasis on holistic care as well as OMT, um, aka osteopathic manipulative treatment, obviously because that's what DOs are known for. And because of this greater emphasis, I wanted to tailor my personal statement more towards DO schools to incorporate a little more nutrition, mental health, as well as patient interactions compared to my MCAS application. And this isn't something that you need to do. There are many medical stu students that get into MD and DO schools with the same application. This is something that I personally like to do. Whenever I apply to something, I like to tailor my answers in regards to whatever the question is. And also it helped me start thinking about whether I wanted to pursue MD versus DO. So in the interview process for DO schools, they will always ask you, why do you want to be a DO? So writing this personal statement and really thinking about why I wanted to consider the DO career made me start thinking about answers that I could use for my interviews. So for those of you that do have time to tailor your application to DO school specifically, that is something that might help to strengthen your application. All right, so moving on to the personal statement. As a daughter of immigrants, I learned about the power of knowledge and communication at a young age. As a result of being bullied for being the only Asian in an all Hispanic elementary school, I longed to learn Spanish to fit in. As I grew older, I continued to improve my Spanish, a language that would later serve another purpose. It allowed me to translate for patients both in California and in Mexico. Coupled with my existential fascination with biology and the way I could imagine applying the lessons learned in class to my own body, I made it my goal to become a physician who could not only diagnose and treat patients, but also one who would be able to educate and empathize with them. One of the greatest lessons I learned in college was that ambition is only as powerful as the diligence and work ethic that support it. My first grasp of this concept arose from the transition from high school to college, a change that I did not bear well. I relied on motivation to study, only doing so when I felt the desire to. As a result, my grades in the first two years of college were substandard. They dropped to their lowest point when a close friend took his own life in the last quarter of my second year. That experience took a toll on my mental health and emphasized the importance of self-care in my mind. Seeing my GPA decrease so much served as a much needed wake-up call. The following winter quarter, I read The Power of Habit and began to implement its lessons into my daily life. I realized that if I truly wanted to become a physician, I would have to make it a habit to study and work regardless of whether I wanted to. I made diligence and perseverance a priority and relocated fickle motivation to the back burner. My goal to become a physician became more concrete upon volunteering with Blank, an organization that tries to set up a clinic in Tijuana on a monthly basis. There, I saw patients with a host of musculoskeletal issues that stemmed from their blue-collar jobs, multiple cases of hypertension and diabetes that culminated from years of high-carbohydrate diets, and various ailments that we could not help with due to our lack of medical paraphernalia and resources. Although I was still able to help with distributing medications and taking vitals, I wanted to be able to interact with patients more. The summer of my third year, I studied abroad in Granada, Spain. There, I spent a month developing my Spanish, especially in regards to medical terminology. Although I'm not fluent, I was able to converse with patients more upon returning from that trip and plan to improve my Spanish in future years. After college, I continued to volunteer with Blank. Our goal is to set up the clinic in Tijuana every month, but this is not always possible due to circumstances outside of our control. In December 2018, we had to cancel our trip. This was in part due to the escalation of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection augmenting their enforcement of screening Hispanic migrants from illegally crossing into the U.S. to escape violent conditions in their own countries. In January 2019, one of the patients that we saw monthly had developed an ulcer at the bottom of his foot. His only access to metformin was through our monthly clinic, but due to our inability to go down that month, his diabetic neuropathy had become exacerbated due to his lack of medication. This experience contrasted sharply with the position I currently hold as a medical assistant at Blank. As the location I work at is based in Blank, a beach town that is considerably more developed than Tijuana, my time there has been quite different. 
At the clinic, I learned to conduct EKGs, apply heart monitors, triage calls, etc. Although these are all valuable skills, the most important lessons I learned were how to best communicate with patients, develop my bedside manner, work in a team, and juggle multiple tasks simultaneously. No matter how many research papers I pour over or articles I consume to educate myself, there is no substitute for in-person connection and subsequent growth. One of the first patients I ever interacted with at the cardiology clinic was someone who had chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. At that point, I was still learning the ropes and shadowing the previous medical assistant, Blank. She was explaining to the patient the instructions for the heart monitor that our cardiologist wanted her to wear. In the midst of the medical assistant's description, the patient jumped up, shouting that she refused to wear the monitor. With wide eyes and trembling hands, she kept shaking her head, so the medical assistant acquiesced and said that she would let the cardiologist know about her decision. Later that day, the patient called and apologized, saying she had changed her mind and wanted to wear the monitor after all. Exchanges similar to my initial interaction with her ensued in the following months. Shouting was not uncommon with her. However, as time went on, I became familiar with her case and began to understand her frustration and despair. Two particular moments stand out in my mind. One, the home health nurse we had ordered for her called to let us know that the patient had tried to die by suicide. And two, the pulmonologist we referred her to said it was very unlikely she would see past another two years. With this new perspective and a greater appreciation of the role that mental health plays in one's overall well-being, I was able to recognize her shouting to be a consequence of her anxiety and her discouragement of her worsening condition. Through my experiences as both a volunteer and a medical assistant, I have come to acknowledge that the medical profession is not the idealistic image I had once envisioned. Patients have yelled at me for the actions of other individuals, and there have been many days when I had to work more than the standard 8-hour shift in order to ensure that every patient was taken care of. Despite these factors though, I know that this is the career for me because I still want to educate and empower individuals to take control of their own health, continuously further my education, and treat patients and accompany them on their journey to better overall well-being. Alright, moving back to the overall application, the last bit is program materials, and that's essentially going to be different for each individual because those are the schools that you apply for and the supplementary essays that you need to upload to submit your application. Alright, so that is all for my ACOMAS application. I hope that you found this helpful, and I will see you another Sunday. Until then, I surely hope that you take care of your health.